All right, so when we last were talking about Peter the Great, we talked about building a standing army. We talked about the fact that he wanted to industrialize, which means westernize, which means modernize Russia. Always fighting with the boyars for control. Always wanted to modernize Russia, get Russia to become a more significant power in the world and really by default in Europe. He also was constantly trying to get access to the sea. Peter, he loved the sea. He actually demanded that his man, men refer to him as captain rather than emperor or czar. Uh, so he's always trying to get to the sea. He, he, at one point he fought a war with Turkey, lost, uh, came back later won and got access to the Black Sea. Uh, problem is the Black Sea is surrounded by Turkey on the south side, so getting through the Bosporus was problematic. Getting into the Mediterranean, getting past Italy, getting past Spain, getting past the British at the at the uh, Strait of Gibraltar, those were all problems for him. So he thought it would be easier if they could get access to the Baltic Sea. So he fought a series of war with Sweden, eventually took the Baltic Sea. Also started to build the city of Petersburg, which was a horrible, horrible, horrible decision because it was so expensive to build the city of Petersburg. It was so expensive in cost, in terms of dollars, and it was incredibly expensive in terms of cost, in terms of lives. People died all over the place building the city of Petersburg. It was incredibly, incredibly expensive to build, uh, both in terms of dollars and human life. Uh, but it gave Peter what he wanted, which was a European port and access to the Baltic Sea. He really wanted Russia to westernize, always fighting with, for, with the boyars, you know, to get rid of the beards, get rid of the robes. Um, and, you know, he's always fighting with the church for control of the church as well. He single-handedly willed Russia into the modern age. Uh, like we said at the at the beginning of Peter's reign, Russia was probably two to five hundred years behind the rest of Western Europe. Uh, by the time Peter died in 1725, uh, Europe was, or sorry, Russia was only about a hundred years behind the rest of Europe. The downside for Russia is they were still a hundred years behind the rest of Europe. Well, then. Peter dies, as, as only could happen in Russia. Peter dies as he is literally writing out the name of the person he wants to take over. And he says, as he's dying, I leave it all to... And then nobody knows who is to take over. Because Peter, like Ivan, had killed his own son. Now, Peter's son didn't want to be Tsar. Peter wanted him to want to be Tsar. Uh, so that got a little bit problematic. But luckily, Peter's son had had a son um, who got married and had two daughters. The two daughters would eventually marry and have a son whose name was Peter the Third. So Peter the Third becomes is the grandson of Peter the Great. Peter the Third's mother ends up ruling Russia as regent for 35 years. Her name was um, Elizabeth. Although she's known in his history, in Russian history, as Elizabeth I. Uh, very effective ruler, very efficient. Really didn't care about modernizing Russia. Didn't try to make Russia a modern European power. Just kind of held, held serve, as they would say in tennis. Um, but Peter was, had absolutely no interest in becoming the Tsar of Russia. Peter III her son. Um, but he did, in fact, get married and do what a czar is supposed to do, and that is have a son. He marries a gal from Germany whose name was Elizabeth. But when she became a member of the Russian Orthodox Church, she changed her name to Catherine. She actually referred to in history as Catherine II because there was another Catherine that had ruled in Russia before. So Catherine is going to be the wife of Peter III. Catherine has no royal blood in Russia. She has German royal blood, but not Russian royal blood. But shortly after she and Peter are married, she gets pregnant and has a son. Yay, Russia is saved. There will be a new czar. The problem is that Catherine absolutely despised her husband, Peter. She didn't like Peter. Peter didn't like her. She had her boyfriends on the side over here, and he had his girlfriends on the side over here, and their worlds really never collided. But Catherine was a person who wanted to... Um, oh wait, I said Elizabeth. It's supposed to be Sophia. Excuse me. Uh, I keep getting my people mixed up because there's so many in Russian history that just get so confusing. So 
Catherine marries Peter. They have a son. It's all good. Russia is happy. We have a czar. He has a son. Everybody's happy except Catherine because she didn't like her husband and her husband didn't like her. Now, one thing Catherine learned early is she liked ruling. She liked being a czarina. That's the wife of a, of a czar. She liked being in power. Her husband, Peter, did not. There were too many headaches with being in power. You had to make decisions. You had to be decisive. You had to do all this stuff. And so Catherine ended up doing a lot of the decisions anyway. And Peter just kind of went and hung out with his friends. Um, and so one of these times when Peter was off playing with his friends, because Peter would disappear for months at a time. Nobody would know where he was at. One of the times that Peter went off into the wilderness, he never came back. Nobody really knows what happened. Most historians agree that Catherine had him killed. Now, Catherine knew how to manipulate people. She was an, a master at manipulating people. Uh, she was a master at manipulating men. Uh, she was a master at manipulating large groups of people. Um, she was a really good ruler. Really, her only problem in Russia was that she was a she, much like her great grandmother's great sorry great her grandfather's sister Sophia, oddly enough, who would be her great aunt. I think that's right. Um, who also would have been a great ruler, but Russia's more ready for a female ruler now when Catherine comes to power than when. Peter's sister Sophia tried to rule. So Catherine's husband quote-unquote dies and once her husband dies then her son becomes czar. But her son is like nine months old, maybe two years old. He's very 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 young. Obviously not old enough to become a czar. So she's going to rule on his behalf as regent. And this is a term that, that is used all over Europe. Whenever a immature ruler of a country is in charge, somebody older, wiser, mentors them and helps them run the country, and they are known as a regent. Uh, the difference here is that Catherine is going to rule as a regent in Russia uh, for the next 30-some years. Uh, usually a regent will rule for 10 years or so, not for that long of a time. Now, for Catherine, she's going to be dealing with a lot of issues. Um, her son, who was the legitimate rule of, ruler of Russia, was much like her father. Her father, sorry, his father. His father, Peter III, was, had no interest in ruling the country. And Catherine knew that. So she never really let her son think that he had a right to rule Russia. And he didn't really think that. He never ruled Russia, never really did anything, never really talked about anything. He just kind of was there. He had a very good life, had a lot of money, and we've talked before this. We've talked before about the idea of being a um, ruler with no power, a figurehead. That's essentially what he was. He had the title, but no power. She had the power. And so things really changed. Now, the way that Catherine manipulated people, she had a lot of lovers. Uh, she usually used those lovers who were influential. So when she needed to fight a war with another country, her best boyfriend in the whole wide world was the head of the army. Um, when she needed to get the boyars on her side, uh, the most powerful influential boyar of Russia was her best boyfriend ever. Um, so she, was, she really knew how to influence men and used that to her advantage to do a lot of really amazing things. Number one, she expanded the borders of Russia. Uh, one of the unique factors about Catherine as a ruler is she never lost a war. Catherine the Great never lost a war in Russia. So that's a relatively impressive feat in a country that had not had a tremendous amount of military success before. She expanded the influence of the army and the navy, making Russia more powerful and influential uh, because she was fascinated with the West. And when I say the West, I mean specifically for her, it was the French. Um, Catherine was kind of ticky in some ways. Um, one of the things that was kind of interesting about Catherine, she was fascinated by the French. She loved the way they dressed, the way they acted, the way they behaved. Um, and Catherine, as a ruler, um, required people to speak in French in her presence. At first, it was simply, speak to me in French, I want to learn French. 
Then it was, I love French, I don't like Russian. Then it was, if you're anywhere near me, you need to speak in French, otherwise I'm going to cut your head off. Maybe that's a little extreme, but that's kind of the way she worked. Then it was, anyone around me, anyone near me, um, you need to speak to me in French. Then it was, I don't even want to speak Russian anymore because Russian is stupid and the Russian people are stupid and we need to just kind of continue on with this process. So Catherine, sorry about that, I was just checking my time. Catherine is dealing with this whole process. So she requires everybody in her court to speak French. And what this does for Catherine is it really kind of almost separates her a little bit from the Russian people. Because Joe Schmo walking down the street, what do they know about Catherine? They know that Catherine is from Germany. They hear rumors that all she does is speak French. And that she won't let her son, the legitimate czar of Russia, rule Russia. A lot of Russians have problems with this, particularly the boyars. Because she's always fighting with the boyars for control. Trying to expand her control, her influence, particularly in, say, Europe. While the boyars, of course, are uh, trying to have a significant amount of influence in Russia. So this whole French-speaking thing gets kind of weird, and it kind of gets in her way. And in fact, ends up hurting her rule, uh, really, for much of her reign, because it shows this disconnect that she has with the Russian people. Because really, Catherine didn't like the Russian people much at all. She gave the boyars tremendous power over the serfs, because... Catherine had a choice. She could be an internationally focused ruler and make Russia an important international power and not worry about domestic affairs, or she could worry about domestic affairs like her mother-in-law and um, ignore the rest of the world. Well, Catherine wanted to be a part of the rest of the world, in particular the West. And so she kind of turned Russia over to the boyars and said, okay, as long as you guys keep the peace, I don't really care what you do. So it gave the boyars a tremendous amount of power over the serfs. The boyars treated the serfs very poorly, very badly. They did a lot of really bad things to the serfs. Uh, beating them, killing them, uh, increasing their taxes tenfold over the course of five years. Just tremendously making their, their life horrible. And Catherine just allowed it to happen. And again, the Russian people tried to fight against this by appealing to Catherine, but the boyars kept treating them worse and worse and worse. So then, like, at one point, some, some peasants, some serfs, actually made their way to Catherine, and they got to court, and they went to talk to Catherine about all the problems that were going on in Russia and how the boyars were abusing them, and Catherine wouldn't hold them in court because they couldn't speak French. And they're Russians. So Catherine, there's always this disconnect for her because she wanted to maintain power over this largest country in the world, so she used the voyars to do that. Finally, in 1796, Catherine dies, and her son Paul takes over. Now, during her reign, or sorry, during his reign, really nothing happened. Catherine had had this fabulous reign. Russia became incredibly powerful, and Paul really did nothing. Because his whole life, Paul lived in the shadow of his mother, Catherine. And Catherine ruled the way Catherine wanted to rule, and Catherine did what Catherine wanted to do. So Paul rules for really about five worthless years, and nothing significant happens. Luckily, though, Paul did do one really important thing that any good czar is going to do. And that, of course, is... That's right. Have a son. And I'm going to stop there so I can pick up on our next PowerPoint.